And we are hearing from Sandra London on the stand. She was just sworn in. Now for testimony. Again, not quarreling with Mr. Watson. I have been provided. It happened that I had a seizure kick here. I didn't happen to have, have A and B. I can dig it out of the trial, but if people will facilitate the examination, we'll be glad to let her have a copy of what he submitted to me. All right. And you said to those my items I had in my possession. Okay, Mrs. Dart, any objection to this procedure? No, Your Honor. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Watson. Mr. Mr. Lippman does not have exhibits A and B, although they are on the plaintiff's exhibit list. But you have A and B, so she'll have a full set. What is your street address? The reason we're having this hearing here is because of the threat made against London. There's no need for this court to have for its finding a street address given the nature of this case. Mr. Wallace, is that in any way relevant to this proceeding? Yes, and I'll tell you why. If Mr. Pippen would drop his affirmative defense that there was an adequate remedy available to the state, I'll withdraw the question. Since he's raised the issue of the adequacy of other proceedings, those other proceedings and their adequacy necessarily involve the opportunity to be able to serve her at a residential address. If we don't have it, then the adequacy is called into question. Indeed, we continue to maintain that there is no other adequate remedy but this one. So it's really his affirmative defense which causes me to ask the question. Your Honor, we have accepted service for Ms. London for five years at my office as the designated person to do so. I have, she has not failed to appear, nor has she not responded to the service. So I, I don't see the need to deal with an address in a case where this matter is sensitive. Uh, we have never refused to state service of any process on this one. The witness will be required to answer the question in writing, which will be sealed, and held in the office of Mr. Vickerman to be filed in the court file, still under seal, as at such time as he is either unwilling or a, unable to accept service of process on her behalf. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. London, you've known Danny Rowland since 1992, is that correct? Yes. And he is a convicted felon under Florida law, to your knowledge? Yes. Okay. How did you first meet him? Danny Rowling wrote me a letter uh, in June of 1992, approximately a week after being charged with the Gainesville murder. And in that first letter, he offered me the exclusive rights to his story and asked me to help him tell his story. Do you know how he knew to contact you? Yes. How did he know to contact you? 
Bobby Lewis. Yeah, the hearsay nature of that response. And I wonder what Mr. Rowling knows. Mr. Walsh, your objection? Well, I think she can represent to the best of her knowledge how she knew to come, how it came about that she was brought into this matter. If she doesn't know, she doesn't know, but if she knows, that's of her own knowledge. Judge, it's still hearsay, and I don't have an opportunity to... The objection is sustained. You may rephrase the question. Did Mr. Rowling explain to you how it was that he contacted you? Objection, Your Honor. Here's that. The objection is overruled at this time. You may say whether or not he did explain it. In other words, you may answer yes or no to that question. Yes. How did he contact you? By letter. Okay. How did he know to contact you? 